Ben, do you want to go first? Let's start with Ben. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so I'm Ben Ford. Uh, my background is very, very technical indeed, having worked in hedge funds and banks and built um, different systems and startups. Um, I started to no notice the low code ecosystem sort of last year as I was moving into more technical strategy work. Um, and I spent, you know, the back six months of last year really figuring out how to help organizations operate more efficiently, change their SOPs and how they work more quickly and adapt to obviously a very, very hectic external environment that we have at the moment. So that's me. Like yeah, it. and I'm Dub. Um, I work for a company called Honest Burgers um, in the UK. We have 40 uh, burger restaurants um, and obviously hospitality has been struck by coronavirus quite a bit. Um, so I come from a not technical at all background, um, but with a keen interest in technology, but really sort of uh, not, not much uh, knowledge on what to do. So um, mostly my experience is from a people space um, with a specialism in learning and development. Um, and sort of I've been using technology to help make learning and development better over the last five years. And now with Honest changing so much, um, my role has shifted completely into pure technology, um, but with sort of that people angle so that how do we make the culture change we want to through effective technology. Um, and there isn't, a, we couldn't find any technology that did it. So we're building it ourselves with the help of Ben. Nice. That sounds great. I think that's probably one of the the ways that like the no code, low code space really stands out is that you can almost build things that maybe wouldn't fall front of mind for like a big engineering budget to pull like engineers and like teams of devs away from like the core products. And you can kind of focus on um, like useful things that you can get up and out really quickly and test things um, which may be like on a bit of like a sidetrack to the core direction of the, the business from a tech side. Would that, does that, is that along the same yeah, sort of lines? Yeah, no, def definitely. That. I mean, so maybe, maybe it's worth sort of just framing what, what the ecosystem's doing at the moment, mm -hmm. right? Um, just, just to sort of ground where, where we've come from with, with the work we've done with Honest. So my, my point of view, um, you know, before I was in tech, I was in the military um, and I think there is a huge amount that we can learn in you know, technology and business from the way the military deals with uncertainty and chaos. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, as we all know, in 2000, uh, sorry, uh, 2020, um, that, you know, it, the world was extremely chaotic. Things change very quickly. Um, and to your point, Tom, you know, the stuff that you want within a business is never going to make it onto the product roadmap of some of the kind of vendor driven software as a service products. So the only way that you're realistically going to be able to build some of the things that you want and even need in some cases is to, is to have control of that yourself. Um, and, you know, for anyone who thought that, oh, you know, 2020 is over now, it's all going to get so much better. Well, <laughs> I, I think that's um, very, very optimistic at best. Yeah, I agree. So I think it's all about like now like just taking ownership and figuring out how to do it on your own, at least like the first version of everything. And if you can do that as both like an individual or an employee or a consultant or anyone, if you can get that first thing to market, whether you're looking for investment or you're looking to actually push an initiative forward in the company, if you can actually get the first version, however primitive up and working, then you're going to be a little bit closer to getting onto a winner. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly my experience of last year. So we basically um, built our entire, like our own sort of coronavirus people system, where it was like the HR system that we had that was in, like really, really not great. Um, you had to go in, you know, if we wanted to um, move everyone around or furlough everyone, we had to do it manually on a person by person basis in their um interface there's no api for our hr system um furlough mm. didn't exist until june in our hr system because they you know they just didn't develop quick enough and their platform's not built for quick deployment um so we were just like okay fine we're not going to use it so we built it in a google sheet <laughs> and um and then inter interacted 
with that Google Sheet through chatbots. And that's how we gave people control and moved everyone around and all that stuff. And it was sort of like fine for a couple of months. And then <laughs> yep. it was like, okay, this is creaking now. <laughs> we've, we've sort of got this point. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of people moving things around. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we need to do something to sort of formalize it a little bit. But absolutely, the joys of no code is mm-hmm. you can, you know, link a Google Sheet to a chatbot and not write a single line of code. Um, the downside is everything's running off a Google Sheet. <laughs> Yeah, but you are, you do, you have something working where you didn't have something working before. Like, again, this is that you have, you have your step one up for relatively low cost, like if any, like marginally with like a Google sheet and then depending what chatbot service. So you have the primitive version working, which like solved like the initial problem. And then when it starts creaking, you're like, okay, well, great. Because if it's creaking, it's being used at least. If it's not creaking, it's probably not being used. So what, um, into like the weeds now like what did you use for the chatbot first off yeah so we um use a no code platform called the bot platform because we're Mm -hmm. a workplace from facebook customer Uh, um like 97 percent of our team log into workplace at least once a week over 90 percent log in every day so like we're like super super high usage of workplace it's where everyone in our business goes to get work done um so using the bot platform just makes sense for us um it's how we do all of our engagement it's how our operators um do tasks and admin and stuff to do with their restaurant it's how we give Mm -hmm. feedback to each other like there's just all this stuff it's how we learn we built our own lms chatbot so you know there's all these things that we do that we were doing with bots for the last 18 to 24 months and then coronavirus has just accelerated it because now we're like okay all these systems that we had that didn't talk to workplace we're just going to replace them and where it's appropriate we're going to build something ourselves where it isn't appropriate we're going to get someone on board who wants to party with us we help we like this idea of suppliers that we would go to like we'd invite to our christmas party like we want that kind of relationship when you chose ben um yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we knew coronavirus meant there wouldn't be a Christmas party. So uh... I've been drinking a lot less lately. Come on, right there. <laughs> I hope he brought um... his Traeger grill with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's you know, song. we've um, we're sort of going through this process. And part of that is, you know, we we work well to improve each other's businesses. Um, whether it's, you know, giving feedback on the way that someone's API works or, you know, sort of um, the bits of information that we need or the, the features that are in the product. Um, you know, we, we want people that will listen and, and, and take our feedback and also tell us if we're being ridiculous. Mm. You know, we don't want to be sort of like, yeah, we'll put it on the list and I'm sure it'll happen in six months. Never happens. You know, just tell us if it's completely ridiculously niche. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of been our transformation through coronavirus as well as yep. like changing everything single thing about our business pretty much apart from the burgers that we serve like everything else pretty much has changed incredible so this is like so there's, a, there's a bit of a meta point that i just wouldn't mind picking up on there mm-hmm. quickly so the way the way honest think about building internal systems is a real a real breath of fresh air you know they, they think about things from a an employee experience first and and this is why they've run into so many problems with external tools is that most external tools are not built like that they're built from the product kind of experience first but they have a product they want to sell it solves a specific problem and it solves it for the for the you know the persona that they've picked up as their kind of their users the problem is that you know in in an ecosystem that is changing really rapidly you have lots and lots of different stakeholders that need different things from a system. So it's actually much more important to be able to um, go beyond just the entities in the system and actually start thinking about the links between those entities. Um, and that's that's the thing that, that Honest get and many of their suppliers don't get, which is probably one of the one of the kind of underlying pressures of why we've ended up doing the project that we're going to talk about in a sec. Nice. I think this is one of the things where the differentiator between companies or startups launch now, like Honest, for instance, they, although they sell, or you sell burgers, you sell like a physical product, like behind the scenes, most of these companies are actually like really heavily using technology. So they are like in the most part a technology to both, I don't know, um, take orders, 
deliver burgers, manage staff. So there is like a really heavy technology stack behind, I don't know, every single modern business, whereas that wasn't the case back in the day. So I think all this information, there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes, like behind the burger that nobody actually gets to see like how things are actually done, which I think is is crazy. But yeah, good to see that you're actually leveraging like really in, like innovative solutions. So what was the the main problem that, or I guess the first problem that you tackle when bringing on Ben, now where, where did it start? And then we can dive into the solution. Yeah. Um, so I think I had um, come to the realization fairly early on that the way that we'd built everything around Google Sheets um, was not a sustainable way of, of running this. We'd already decided we wanted to rip out our HR system. Um, and we wanted to, you know, really go heavy on bots and automation. Um, but we knew that uh, as soon as you get, you know, over a couple of thousand rows in a Google sheet, things start slowing down. And it was actually a problem that we um, encountered with, um, the bot platforms, uh, the way that they deal with webhooks. So you can, with the bot platform, you can make a webhook call and do a response, but you get, uh, it was originally 10 seconds and they upped it to 30 because we were, uh, <laughs> our Google Sheets were taking so long um, to respond. Um, and they were like, we're not doing it longer than 30 because <laughs> it has changed for every customer and every bot. <laughs> like 30 is the max. Um, and I was like, okay, we need to do something we need to actually sort this out and um, get a, a system in place that is scalable and a lot faster. So we brought Ben in and then Ben was like, yeah, you need a Postgres database. Um, we're like, okay, fantastic. What the hell's a Postgres database? <laughs> so we start, basically just started transforming all these Google Sheets into tables on Postgres. And then we're like, okay, right, how the hell do we get the bots to talk to it? So then we're like, okay, well, we need a graph API because it's super modern and it, allow, it allows you to efficiently go and get the data that you need. And if you, you know, decide you want to move away from the bot platform at some point to build something ourselves that's um, like super specialist and more robust, you can directly query your database inside that program and get it to talk to Workplace. Plus, Workplace is owned by Facebook. Facebook used graph technology and invented graph technology. So <laughs> it makes sense to have these two things that are super simple and, and work really well together um and that's sort of where we've got to is we've re um we've reconstructed what these google sheets were we've moved all of the bots onto moving to this postgres database through the graph api um and now we're just sort of going and running a bit further with it it's like okay what are the other things that we <laughs> uh, want to replace so what are the other things that we can map in this database that enables um, people to perform better at work because they have access to all the data they need and also make our bots way more helpful and much quicker. So instead of going through a 20 step process, we can automatically get you the information that's gonna help you do that 20 step process in five steps. Um, and instead of waiting three seconds for a Google sheet to get you uh, a response, you're waiting half a second for Postgres to do it. Got it. So yeah. I think so. Just just get... to build on that slightly mm -hmm. from uh, from putting my my techie hat on. Um, so you know, in the old days, like when I'm, I'm saying old days, like five years ago, is ancient history in, in the tech industry. Uh, in the old days, we wouldn't have been able to do this. Um, <clears throat> we wouldn't be able to do this in an accessible way for a business like Honest, right? You would have had to have an infrastructure team. You would have had to have, um, you know, some technologists that that you employed or you'd have to have like long-term consultants but the ability to do this now you know we so we just to throw some concrete names out there we used um, a cloud platform called Hasura for the data database access which is amazing because it lets you treat a traditional um, relational database as a no-code piece of, as a piece of your no-code ecosystem so that's hosted by them the database itself is hosted on DigitalOcean. So there's no kind of huge amount of overhead for that. So all of the operational data is, you know, secure, hosted for you, backed up. Um, 
and then the um the the bit that we wanted to ensure that we didn't sort of lose was the ability to rapidly iterate and experiment right because that's that's the thing that is you know driving honest ability to deal with current circumstances but at the same time we wanted to introduce the ability to have better situational awareness consolidated data and um a, a, just a, a more stable environment to build on so that that's the kind of strategic story underlying this i've got a bunch of i'm just looking at my graphics that i uh, i put together to explain all this stuff from uh, from the or original brief um so what did yeah. what did dashi moving that off of you mentioned about um speed and experience so how does how does moving something into a setup like this which like improves speed and improves um efficiency how does that like bounce back to the business in terms of um either a monetary saving or a improving overall process or customer happiness or employee happiness. Um, how does that kind of kick back into the overall business? Yeah. So, I mean, at the minute, because it's, uh, well, most of our restaurants are closed, <laughs> um, apart from for delivery, like we're sort of in a bit of a, in, in a weird place because a lot of our admin processes are, based around having customers in our restaurants, because that's the business that okay. we're in, <laughs> uh, ultimately. Um, but there is lots of people stuff that is just, you know, is much more efficient now because we've built a system that puts um, our general managers in, in a position where they can change things whenever they want and they can change everything. Um, before, we, you know, if you wanted to um, update someone's, uh, pay rate in your restaurant you probably had to go through a three person or like approval process um, it had to be changed on our HR system there were certain days when you could do it to interact with payroll and all this stuff mm. um, and now you can do it in a chatbot um, <laughs> you can just say yeah this person now gets paid £9.50 an hour um, and, and it happens instantly or you can say when the day like when is it going to change in the day and then all we do is we use all of that context and that information and we provide our payroll team with a report that's like okay this person got paid this much for these for these hours and this much for these hours um you know I pay them this total amount this month um it's like just it's it's just so much so much quicker and, and easier and that's like just one tiny example there's you know um promotions or moving restaurant moving people restaurants or um changing your opening hours and things like that like well, at the minute we've we've mostly mapped out the people side but next is customer and operations so for a customer's perspective there's nothing worse than um you go to your local honest and it's closed because there's um i don't know um the extraction isn't working or there's been a leak or you know something like that actually we we want to be able to um uh, give our general managers the ability through a chatbot to say, okay, we're closing early today. And that automatically goes and tells um, our, our website, Google, Facebook, um, Yelp, like all these places where our opening times exist. Um, and, you know, fire out a tweet saying, hey, we're really sorry, but X is closed due to Y. Um, and it's, you know, you can just automatically do that as a general manager um, right away, because at the minute, um, you know, our opening times are changing every month as the government update the guidance. And it is a manual process of like three people for a whole day to go and update it everywhere for all of our restaurants. Um, it's, it's, it's insane. So, you know, yeah. how do we use automation and one source of truth in our graph mm -hmm. um, API to be able to just get that information out there? That's great. So that's, it's like a, just a direct cost saving in terms of human labor hours having to do it. And I guess also you are reducing the amount or the likelihood of errors and mistakes being done yeah. if you're updating yeah. stuff in multiple places as well. Yeah. Plus, you know, that customer um, could, uh, you know, pop to the, uh, another honest, like walk 10, 20 minutes the other direction instead of 10 minutes this way to then go half an hour in that direction to find another oh. honest burgers because you know or you know they're 
they're like, oh, at least I checked and yeah, it was closed. It was up to today. I don't feel bad. I'm upset I didn't get a burger, but at least I didn't walk 10 minutes in the rain to get one when I couldn't. Mm. Um, nice. Yeah, there's, there's all those things as well. But most of what we're trying to do is push all of the like decision making and all the important stuff to do with a customer's experience or a person's experience working at Honest into like the lowest um lowest is like the, the worst word but you know <laughs> the le- the less junior people or you know the people that don't sit in head office so mm. if you're a general manager you have control over your team's entire employee experience it's all about you because you know your team you know the context of your restaurant you know whether or not you have a team that love big group high fives at nine o'clock in the morning or you know that you've got a team where you have to walk in with coffee because they're all knackered in the morning <laughs> um you know and we're not saying this is the step-by-step process to having a happy team. It's step one, high five, step two, buy coffee. Like, because we don't know your team. We don't know your restaurant. We don't know the vibe. You do as a general manager. Same with a customer. If you're a waiter, you're looking after a section of seven tables. You know those seven tables better than your manager does, who's thinking about the restaurant and the sales and safety. And you know it better than we do in head office. Why should we decide these are the five steps you have to make to be able to serve a table you know, we don't know that table. You might know that that person comes in for their burger every single lunchtime. So you don't have to, you know, offer them the special because they know it. It's their seventh time in a month being in your restaurant. You don't yeah. have to ask if they have any allergies because you know them, you know their name, you know the name of their kids and you know their allergies. <laughs> so you can just be like, just checking everything's the same as last time. Yeah, it is. Perfect. You know, why yeah. should we tell you how to serve people or look after people? when you know them better than we do and i think yeah that's the cool way that which is that unique for this particular use case is that you're using chatbots to perform what usually would be like official sounding tasks so usually there'd be like this really like cumbersome like process you have to follow to like update the opening hours of a store where you're just saying yeah. like the chatbot is one of the most like frictionless things you can do especially if it's fast and like immediately responsive yeah. I guess like now I think about it, it would be quite annoying if you had to submit a request on a chatbot and then wait like a really long time yeah. for the response to come through. You know, yeah. like, how's this, is this working? Is this not working? So yeah, that, yeah. like you said, that performance enhancement on the speed side, would like you have like a big return on doing things quickly. It's so important. We accidentally had our Hasura instance set up in Ohio. Um, and uh, changed it to London yesterday and we've increased the performance like five times over because <laughs> um, I was like this isn't much faster than the Google sheet what the hell is going on and it was like and, and I, I could see like people mess like I was getting messages from people saying hey I'm talking to the chatbot it stopped responding so I said hello or help or whatever and it's like oh well it was responding it just took three seconds and you've now broken it by staying, sending something else and taking you on a different flow. So the performance is key. Like it's every, you know, every second, I mean, less than a second, every millisecond that, that really makes a difference, especially because our people are busy. You know, we don't want mm. things to take forever to do. Um, we want to make it as seamless and as frictionless as possible. Got it. From the like, tech point of view, Ben, you mentioned that you were had like parts of i don't know if it's this process or another process in nan is that right how, how have you um added this into like this sasora digital ocean stack yeah sure so and maybe um, what just, nan just want... is to start with yeah. maybe that might help cool so i just want to build on, on something that, that dub was talking about there the 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 idea of pushing decision making towards the so instead of saying down dub i like to say towards the edges Right, it's the edges of your organization nice. who, are, who are in <laughs> yeah. contact with the customers, right? The, the the people that are in contact with the environment are the ones that should make the decision. And this is a, a concept from the military called mission command, which is where you set general direction and you give people clear constraints within which they can they have freedom to operate. And that's that's what Dub's talking about here. And it, you mm-hmm. know, honest is a fantastic example of that working really well in the wild. Um so NAN, so going back to your, your question, NAN is a um, an automation platform, a um, bit like Integromat or um, what's the one that begins with P? Uh, Parabola. Parabola, yeah. So it's a graphical, graph-based um, automation framework. 
that it fits with the philosophy that we, you know, one of the kind of guiding principles that we set out at the beginning of this with, um, with Honest was the stuff that we use should be open source as much as possible and you should be able to run it on your own infrastructure, right? If you play forward a year or two and you're a bigger business and you now do have a team of technologists and you decide that you do want to bring all of your infrastructure under your own control, you know, and have continuous deployment and move towards the kind of the next level of, of technical implementation, you should be able to host this stuff yourself with minimal disruption. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about NAN um, is that it has a cloud-based version, um, but you can also self-host it. So you can, you know, you can clone the code, you can self-host it. They're a brilliant team. Um, I asked them for a, um, I asked them for a node for a new type of chat service um, late last year, and someone picked it up and built it and released it in eleven hours, and that's like a you know heavyweight kind of programming task. You know, <laughs> programming to an API it was super super impressive. It's incredible. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so I, I used an AN to, and then, I mean here's a, here's a probably even more in, incredible. Um, idea here i used nan to translate data from a sheet a google sheet into five different tables in postgres and i did it using visual drag and drag and drop i'll send you a screenshot of the flow that i built later mm -hmm. i used it doing visual drag and drop um and you know i'm a i'm a programmer i could like bust out my ide and i could write code to do all this stuff uh, and that's what i did for years and years but actually even as a programmer, doing it in this way was quicker than I could have done it. Like, you know, logging into all the different services and um, and that was a real eye opener for me. You know, I am I think there's many programmers out there and if there's any that are listening to this that think, oh, you know, that these are toy environments, they're not, you know, suitable for production workflows or for, you know, doing complicated logic. Well, that's, that's just not the case. Like, you know, if you're, if you're in an environment where you have libraries for all of these services and you know you have something up and running in production already then perhaps they're apples to apples but if you're starting from scratch from a blank sheet of paper automation tools like nan are just streets ahead for building stuff that's like a really interesting perspective coming from a programmer because there's obviously the normal pushback of like drag and drop tools and i think it's maybe like a bit of honesty coming from like engineers and developers about like where, where they're useful and where they're not. And I think you do find developers using them because like in the hands of an engineer or a developer, a tool like NAN or like an Integromat or a Parabola or some of these more like complex general automation platforms, like a tray, for instance, become like incredibly powerful. Sure, like non-technical people can use them, but in the hands of an engineer, I like it to hunting a rabbit with a bazooka is they can just do like so much incredible things like so quickly and they just get it straight away. Like, okay, here it is. Like, here's what it can do. Here's where I need to augment it with code. Um, and yeah, like you said, that's a direct cost saving on to maybe like a client like honest where you're saying, I'm not going to hang code all this stuff from scratch. I did this like in a couple of hours. Um, and here's the tool I used. Yeah, ex exactly. And, and, you know, just to build on that slightly, you know, there, there are there are always so I, one of the diagrams that I'll I'll send over. It's like a, you know, there, there's an evolutionary scale, right? There's there's things that you want to start that you need to start super cheap, super low friction because you'll start hundreds of those and many of them will actually not be that useful. Or there's like the one-time tools that you're just going to use to migrate data and then you know you don't care after that. So that's on one end of the scale, and then you've got your core kind of you know, business processes and, and, you know, finance data and, and, and the stuff that needs to be secure, protected, performant, you know, all, all of these different um, spectrums that move sort of upwards. Hmm. And that's where you want, you know, things like Hasura, which is a, you know, an open source, you know, VC backed startup building infrastructure. Hmm. And, you know, an NAN allows you to start on the one end and spin things up quickly and then you can decide over time whether you want to say okay right that module is taking too long now we can employ a programmer with a very defined task to just repl replicate that piece of functionality versus you know hiring a hiring a, 
um, you know, hiring an agency who are going to go and misunderstand your initial requirements and go off into the weeds and come back a month later and, you know, having spent 30 grand and, and you actually haven't got what exactly you wanted. You know, now you can say, right, this is the thing I want. This is what it looks like. This is what it has to do. Mm. I'll see you tomorrow when you've done it. <laughs> How does that line up from like Dub in your opinion from from somebody who's I'm going to class you as now semi technical moving into <laughs> Dub is Dub is very technical he just uses okay. different tools perfect <laughs> great how does this line up from maybe what you knew previously about getting technical things done with engineers and developers to this um, new way of doing doing something um, I think it's much more of a um semi-permeable black box now compared to a completely closed off black box um like i i've been a big user of integramat for about a year um which is another like no code platform but it's a mm -hmm. bit um so but I, I like to think of it like zapier is like no code for someone who is absolutely under no circumstances ever gonna write a single line of code um integramat is sort of like the next step up where it's like it's it holds your hand, but also you can do a little bit more with it, and you can get into the bones a bit more. And then you've got like NAN, which is like a little a step up next to, from that. So um, I've been using Integromat and sort of googling things and figuring things out in that sense. And the move to NAN is something that I think we will do. It's just that we're not like at the minute. We I think we have like two hundred and fifty Integromat scenarios. <laughs> It would just be a massive undertaking to to move mm. all that stuff over, um, but it is just the idea of you're able to see in a visual way what Ben has built or what is happening, and that makes it much easier for me to troubleshoot or understand, and even go and like um, you know build something that's slightly similar or um, even replicate in my own world what Ben has built in NAN, I can then build an Integromat because those are the tools and the words that I'm used to mm -hmm. seeing. So it helps, you know, I can build it in, and, and sort of migrate it in my mind um, in that way. And that's what I think is really helpful. It's having that visual um, uh, idea of actually what is happening and seeing the process actually mapped out is really helpful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's, that's a very good point. I mean, there was another tool that we used um, called AutoCode, which is it's like a no code platform except you stitch everything together by writing javascript so it's it's a javascript ide but it comes with a bit of you know autocomplete kind of um and, and a standard library so that you know it feels different feels different to writing code but it's it's code and it gets deployed as lambda services and it's you know a bit more real um so that so that gives gives us a kind of a spectrum from you know your bog standard well understood um, chatbots on the on the external side, automations for doing logic in the middle, Hasura for all the data, autocode for doing things like Hasura actions which need a, an endpoint to hit and they, they run some logic. Mm -hmm. um, and the kind of the meta piece here is that, you know, I, I came in as a, um, as a, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, I'm, a, I'm a catalyst really, right? I'm not involved in building the systems like dub owns the systems the business owns the systems um i'm i'm able to kind of transfer a bunch of knowledge through using all these tools which make dub and the, and the, the businesses i help more effective internally mm -hmm. so it's kind of like you know the old adage of teaching and teaching them to fish rather than than fishing for them yeah or telling them like not to fish on the side of a road <laughs> i think yeah, yeah knowing just knowing that the tool landscape I found, especially the work of like the last year, is the amount of time you can save people if you know exactly the tools that they need to use to get the job done and the nuance behind each tool rather than them having to find it out themselves. As in going down a path and they need like a, a feature and then like building out loads of the infrastructure. Maybe you went down like the Zapier path, but then you're like, oh, dang like we can't do this thing which we really need now we need yeah. to like try and build it all again in integromat and then you're like oh like oh, integromat's just yeah. hard like i can't figure it out so it's about matching 
like you said, Ben, the technical capability of the team and the people you're working with, with the right tools for the job and like knowing where you're either going to hit the limit of that person's capability or you might have to bring somebody else in. So you've talked about like loads of solutions. Could we, is there anything we can show? So is there anything we can see in terms of some like workflows that you use or like a, a like an example of something either built in NAN or um, something you have in Integramat Dub, anything that would you can like bring on screen so people can like take a peek at either a granular level or a high level. I don't mind whatever you think might be interesting. Yeah, this is like one of the, the great things about talking to people who are heavy users of like these platforms because everyone sees it as in like from a high level, Integromat can do this, but rarely yeah. do you get um, the opportunity to see like behind the scenes of a company like Honest, who, like you said, are using 250 Integromat flows and all these systems that like that actually like power the business in effect. Yeah, I mean, I um, I can show you the, uh, so here's like just the, Oh, actually, it's more. It's 535. So, <laughs> so yeah. So here are just like here's our list of Integromat scenarios. Like it is insane. That's incredible. And who who <laughs> has been responsible for this dub over time? And how long have you been um, building these in Integromat? Uh, mostly me and a guy called Dan. Um, we're like the <laughs> the two techie people. Are honest. So you're um, non-technical. Um, introduction of the start of the school is completely false. <laughs> ah, I don't know. I mean, so like I've, I, it depends on what you think about no code, but <laughs> like, yeah, I've, I've done all this without writing a line the, of code. <laughs> it's about the geolocation from, um, from postcodes piece of no code that you wrote. Tell us about oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Very technical. <laughs> Oh yeah. So, I mean, if you remember GCSE maths and cosine, <laughs> then it's easy. Uh, yeah. But, so one of the things we did, Tom, is um, every at the, during the first lockdown, we had to close all of our restaurants because we didn't feel safe allowing our teams to use public transport to get to work, you know, mm. at all. So what we did is we took the opportunity to, um, ask for everyone's postcodes of where they were staying because we know our HR system isn't very user-friendly. You don't log in through a single sign-on thing. You might log in like once a year. Um, and so everyone's addresses was wrong. And also people have moved. Like they're just like, I live on my own or I live with 10 people in a tiny box flat. I don't want to spend three months locked down with them. I'm going to go and live in my friend's house. So we were like, we built a chatbot saying, hey, do you want to come back to work? If we can get you a place uh, in an honest nearby where you are, tell us what your postcode is and we'll work out your nearest honest and we'll try and deploy you there. We've moved, I think we moved like um, 80, over 80% 80 of our team had to move restaurant. Like barely anyone works in the same restaurant they were in. It's only the people outside of London really that are in the restaurant they were in when they started. Um, so we had to work out where everyone's closest honest was and what the distance was. So we used... The, we figured out the coordinates of our, our restaurants, the coordinates of our people using their postcodes, and then used cosine to work out the distance on it over a sphere. So it's about accurate to about two meters, because obviously the globe, the world isn't a complete perfect sphere. But you must be pretty proud of that one. That's pretty good. I was very impressed <laughs> with myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I did spot almost a tear in Dub's eye when I pointed out that the database that Hasura lives on has um, PostGIS built in, so you could have just done that as a select. <laughs> yeah. But so then the new world that would be built custom. So. Yeah. Okay. So here is um, the Integromat scenario for when someone new joins Honest Burgers. Um, it's got a couple of different API calls. Um, these are just some past JSONs to just get the data out of the request. Um, we're sending them an email um, and we're sending them a text about the email just in case so they definitely don't miss it because it's a very important email. What we're doing is um, someone new gets added to um, our uh, database, um, a new person. We then want to go and get the rest of the information about that person. So workplace needs to know their job title and where they work. Um, 
And I think that's about it. Um, so it goes and gets that information. We're making a graph query. We go and provision them a workplace account. Workplace responds with an FBID, which is a unique ID for every person on Facebook. Um, we add that FBID into another table in Postgres um, so that we can use it in other things. We then use that FBID to go and get an access code, um, which is uh, how we get people logged into Workplace. Workplace doesn't know people's email address, doesn't know their phone number. Um, you just use an access code to log in, and then you can set up a username and a password. This passes the JSON to get extract the access code. Access code goes into this email, and then we send them a text. If there's a problem and someone's email address is incorrect, it sends an email to Dan, who looks after Workplace for us, and says, hey, Dan, this person's joining. They didn't get their access code. Can you just send it to their manager? Um, all automatically. Um, and I can invoke this inside Hasura, because we're using Hasura Actions. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, a Hasura event. So we've created a couple of events and I can just click here. I'm going to invoke it on myself um, because that's, why not? Um, so I might get a two, there might be some weird stuff that happens because I already exist on Workplace, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so if I invoke this, you can see that Integromat is running the scenario. Um, I can check my email and... I might have an email. So nice. Welcome to, to Honest. It's so great to see something which works so smoothly, isn't it? And goes through goes through instantly. Yeah. So there's my uh, my access code, which I could use to log in. Um, and there's my welcome email. And then also I've got um, a text on my phone mm -hmm. um, saying "Welcome to Honest." Absolutely incredible. I think nice the. Flows like this, when you have so many instances or so many different scenarios, like that's just one scenario. If you, but there's, I guess, I'd say 90 plus percent of businesses, let's, let's just say SMEs for, for the use case, will be doing flows like that absolutely manually. So someone joins yep, a yep. company, they'll pass a note to somebody say, or email yep. somebody and say, hey, Charlie, we've got a new starter. Can you send them an email and give them access to system A, system B, and system C? That'll go onto the yeah. list of tasks. It might not even happen instantly. It might happen in a few hours. And that that those man hours really add up when you start like yeah. building all these processes together. How many, how many people or how many hours saved do you reckon your stack of 535 integral scenarios <laughs> at honest burger saved oh, in total uh, i reckon you, you hazard a guess i reckon it saved about five people in headcount um full time full time yeah as i get maybe three full time okay. um but we just we just went through a restructure, so five roles went. But uh, so I can actually tell you that automation Quite has generally <laughs> um, got rid of uh, five roles in Honest, um, mm -hmm. and um, I reckon it probably saves about five out five six hours a week. So you get a whole day pretty much if you're just taking into account lunch break um and getting a coffee in the morning <laughs> so yeah i think it genuinely yeah. has made a, a huge difference um i mean this process alone provisioning people's access codes and setting people up on um workplace setting them up was always automatic because our old hr system talks to workplace but it only spoke to workplace twice a day um at like eight in the morning and two o'clock in the afternoon so if you hired someone you know at four o'clock they wouldn't get access to workplace until the next day at eight um and their access code provision was all manual so dan who wow. i work with had to log in to workplace see all the new people get their access code and message it to their general manager um so that wow. the general manager could then give that person their access code <laughs> so it was you know it's a hugely you know slow process um and now we can do it all automatically. And then that, you know, goes into once someone's on Workplace, there's a load of other automations that kick off. So mm -hmm. someone joins um, our like Honest Burgers main group and they get a chatbot message saying, hey, I'm this bot. This is what I do. Um, 
Here's a little guide around workplace. Make sure that you take a look around. I can also introduce you to your team. Just tap this button and then it'll make a group chat with them and the rest of their team uh, or their manager or whoever. Um, and then, you know, the next day they get another message from another chatbot saying, hey, I'm this bot. I look after this. You need to do your health and safety training, your food safety training, your fire safety training. Let's get started. And it goes through it. And then, you know, a week later, it's say, hey, I'm this chatbot. This is what I look after. We just want to make sure that we've got your address and your phone number and your availability correct before we start adding you to shifts automatically. Um, just check that this is all okay. Um, so, you know, there's like, workplace is so key to us that it's like, we just need to get you on there. Once we get you on there, it's, we're sorted. And like I said, 97% of our people log in every week. So it's not that we have a, a problem at the minute with the system, it's just that it was inefficient. Here's a question for for both of you, which is slightly less like in the weeds of like honest, but more like about the general like landscape in terms of opportunities now that you're able to do things like this as a single person who is in air quotes non-technical or not a developer. <laughs> <laughs> um there's obviously endless millions of businesses with archaic manual processes. What do you think? the opportunities are for people like yourself or people who may be at the beginning of the, of a journey pursuing a position um, with the skill set of you. So wants to maybe learn how to use automation tools and then like either package them up somehow and have them as an offering for a set of businesses or actually go and work at a company to do what you do. How do you, how do you think about that as like a greater opportunity in the world of, um, internet businesses and innovation, etc. Uh, so I'll, I'll maybe take a stab at that one. So I've got a, a perfect example of this. Both my brother and my dad work in construction. Um, uh, my brother's director of a construction company. My dad owns a piling company. Mm -hmm. um, my dad has three or four full-time office-based pa paper shufflers. Right, it, you know they're, they're constantly running construction crews into London. You know they've got to do all the paperwork for the lorries. Um, they've got to follow up all the billing, all this kind of stuff. Right, I would I would imagine that going into any business like that, any traditional you know service based or non technical business, I would imagine there are opportunities to save tens to hundreds of thousands of pounds every single one of them by applying the stuff that Doug just showed. Right. Um, you know, the, the, the stack here is, I mean, I've been blown away digging into the capabilities of Hasura particularly, right? Hasura as, as the brain. I mean, that's the perfect name for it, which uh, Dub decided to name the, the central instance at, um, at Honest the Brain. It's, it's got everything you need for a centralized database um, solution, right? You can model the data easily. You can fire off events when the data changes. You can have actions, which are again, things that, um, and web, web hooks that you fire off that just gets merged into your GraphQL um, ecosystem. You can join other schemas as well. So Hasura lets you join other GraphQL based schemas. So you could join in your Stripe data or your, you know, whatever else you could, so you could build this kind of graph and that's your single source of access for any company data. And so that versus, you know, using a bunch of different systems that all have a different, a different piece of the picture means that, for example, for business intelligence, we are able to switch, switch on Metabase, which costs, you know, it's a droplet, a Dropbox, a Dropbox, um, DigitalOcean droplet, mm -hmm. costs $5 a month versus I think the, the next cheapest BI solution that was able to handle all of the complexity was 50 grand a year or something dub wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah something like that so so the opportunities wow. are enormous um i think as somebody with the skills the opportunity is that you could you know what, what i'm trying to do with this is, is build up a um a set of clients that need help with this but not not to go and do the work for them and to make them dependent on me but to enable them and empower them to do it themselves and and lean on me to do you know, the, the really very very technical stuff around the edge when where necessary like you know authorization authentication 
finance integration you know stuff that actually mm. needs a, a programmer to do yeah um but really to empower empower people to to build their own systems that's that's where i see the real opportunity both both for suppliers and for companies that need the help got it and to you dub the opportunity is massive um just in terms of you know not like obviously there's a huge benefit in terms of you're not wasting people's time on the menial admin tasks that don't really add that much value so you can give those people a much more meaningful experience of work um because they're thinking more or they're doing more creative things they're doing things that genuinely make a difference um and not pushing paper around but also the fact that there's less time um fixing mistakes because the more you can automate um those things and one of our guiding principles um especially for the work that we've been doing with the people data but especially around financial information as well so we just did a huge piece of work where we've now integrated our till system all the way through to our financial records and it's entirely automated and one of the guiding lights is it should like that data should never be touched by human hands at all you know before we were downloading it and uploading it into seven different systems all those opportunities where it could go wrong you know into spreadsheets out of spreadsheets into different formats and it's just every single step there's an opportunity for someone to just not drag a formula down all the way or uh you know excel suddenly gets rid of all the zeros at the start of a transaction id and then suddenly everything's completely screwed whereas you know by automating that you're you're just solving so many problems and i think a lot of people will get really scared and be like oh my god no it's way too technical it's way too scary and you know sure there is a little bit of an apprehension but if you start with something that you know you can mess up safely you'll realize it isn't actually that scary you know you can mess it up a few times and you will just you know learn by grazing your knees um and it, it is totally fine and uh, you know there's some great people out there that will help as well i mean integra support is really really responsive um they've helped me with some custom stuff um and um i know that there's definitely um more benefits than risks i would say by just starting and getting on with it taking the plunge yeah absolutely maybe let's start we did not start with financial information maybe start with some of yeah exactly yeah yeah. there's um yeah i completely agree with everything you said and it's good to see like how much or how in-depth you've gone like across the entire stack kit on this to actually implement these procedures and it seems like it's paying off for you yeah totally so the the other thing just want to have an extra an extra little point in there that by by having the structure there as well, you know, so many businesses, they just do stuff, right? You don't know, you don't know how things work. You don't know where decisions are made. You don't know what the constraints are. Things just happen. And, you know, it's very noisy, very, you know, lots of friction, fast growing tech companies, particularly paradoxically like that, you know, there's so much external pressure to grow that all of the good practice that Dubs just talked about gets left behind. And actually this is a one way, one place where no or low code can really help because you don't have to waste a load of overhead with that system growing with you. Um, and you can also slot in, you know, in areas where you don't have a node for your no code system, you can slot in a, a little piece of JavaScript or whatever running on a serverless function, you know, part of your normal estate and you can build a kind of organic system that grows with you. Um, whereas, you know, most businesses like, you know, I've mentioned my, my dad's, my brother's construction business, right just utter chaos operationally and that's just what what life is like for most most businesses i think operations is just this layer of you know the floor is lava everywhere (laughs) i like it well hopefully um just by like having conversations like this more and more throughout the time will either one if nothing else surface information as to what's possible with these tools but also to hopefully inspire some people to actually turn the hand it's starting to automate some processes in these businesses which have flora's lava-esque operation styles yeah yeah gents that is pretty good place to wrap thank you very much for joining me it's been an absolute pleasure and look forward to speaking again soon 
Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Nice. Catch you later on. Cool. See. Thanks, guys. Yes. Bye.